Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and welcome back to the Vehicle Assembly Building where we are going to be doing another Starship, right? We like Starship. This is like the fifth or sixth Starship video. I don't know. That's right, there will be no more Starships after this ever again. Starships are evil, right? No, just kidding. Um, oh, maybe. Um, I don't know. I would want to do more tutorial videos. That video seems to be getting a lot of views and you guys seem to have liked it. So, uh, well, 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 why am I talking about that <laughs> on screen? So, um, what's going on in today's video? So today we are going to be doing a mini starship and I'm going to be saying flying it on the same profile as a real starship, but like it's going to be mini herb. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, this is a idea I've had for a while. I thought about doing and I thought hey, let's do this pretty cool idea So we're gonna take our little mini starship here, which you're making uh, right now We just put three terrier engines and three thud engines on the bottom of it then putting a nice little fairing there at the bottom uh, Some landing legs and then uh, we will just finish up the rest of the starship and then we'll super heavy and then we'll fly her on out to uh, Fly her on out to do it and back. This is a fully functional starship as in uh, it has like fins and stuff that move and it's all fancy and epic, right? Um, so yeah, we just finished the main construction of the uh, the vehicle, if you will. Um, we're putting just some um, reaction wheels and stuff in the payload bay because eh, this thing is pretty small and it needs all the fuel it can get. So we can't really put stuff in the payload bay and put RTGs because uh, none of the solar panels I think really look right. So because it's a real Starship, we don't even know what their solar panels look like. But it's um, in some older videos, they have like weird kind of like... I don't know how you describe them. They're like expand. It's weird. You can check some of the SpaceX videos. And none of those really exist in KSP, so I just decided to go with RTGs. Now we're just starting construction of the uh, bottom fins, uh, which I constructed out of um, wings initially, but then uh, after doing some tests and stuff and just looking at it, it didn't look right So uh, and didn't really fly right, so we ended up switching those out for structural panels. I forgot to record that though, so in a little bit here there'll be like a weird crossfade, and magically there will, there will be um, structural panels for the fins. But for now we're just constructing the main shape of the fins initially out of, uh, out of wings, as you can see right now. And then uh, we'll do the uh, top fin there in a second. While that is happening, I would like to, oh my gosh, guys, do the plugs. Oh my gosh. Um, first of all, thank you. Uh, as the day of recording, first of all, um, I'm recording and I'm literally supposed to be going live and doing live stream in like 20 minutes. So I may have to push that back maybe 5, 10 minutes. Um, yeah, we, we here cut things really close here in Pilot Studios. Um, uh, so yeah, I've been doing daily live streams for, uh, this is day number two now. I don't know if you guys like these. They seem to get a lot of subs and a lot of people to the Discord, so I don't know. Let's run the Discord, right? I don't know why I keep plugging my Discord so much. I think it's just cool to talk to you guys and stuff. Or you could, oh my gosh, guys, hit the red subscribe, hit notification bell, squad, the words, type, Fortnite, fidget spinner, default dance, get memed on, guys. <laughs> um... Uh, okay, so yeah, here comes, um, so yeah, here, uh, yeah, this is the end of, uh, day one of building the starship, and oh my gosh, day two has arrived! Uh, yeah, I did this over the course of two days, or more specifically, a late night, and then an early, or then a morning, uh, which is, uh, when I actually filmed the video, which is today! So yeah, that is the, uh, construction of, uh, the starship fully completed, um, just put some Werner engines on, I believe, I don't know if that was on screen, I don't even remember already, and now we're starting construction of the Super Heavy. Uh, super heavy is obviously pretty super and pretty heavy um, and uh, we're just gonna try and just spam as many thud engines as possible I feel like they're a realistic scale for the Raptor engine uh, their plume is actually way 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 too small um, But uh, eh, why not do them because they, they, they look good and these things actually have quite a big TWR mainly because we had a um, drain um, like about two-thirds of the fuel from Starship on launch uh, because it wouldn't be able to have enough thrust to weight ratio to actually get into orbit with the three terrier engines firing uh, So we did that so the thing's actually quite a bit lighter uh, than it normally would be so uh, super heavy has a lot of power And I end up do taking a few engines uh, Engines off of the vehicle because that's a lot of engines uh, Yeah, so we do have to uh, do a, a mid-orbit refueling uh, if you didn't, uh, on, on the starship So there you go, just doing that as our final engine and design and then just doing um, just uh, the um, the last few things, reaction wheel, electrical, stuff like that. A few things I forgot to record uh, as we crossfade over the launch now is me putting on those uh, the grid fins and our uh, bottom fins uh, for the super heavy, which I just used four of those wing pieces. And for the grid fins, I just went with air brakes. It's really hard to make uh, good looking grid fins out that small of a scale. And they're um, really ineffective and we don't have a whole lot of delta V and we need effective air brakes, right? So let's uh, get SAS on and we're kind of wobbling all over the place. So let's just get into the air. 
First thing we're going to do is, uh, first of all, we like those shooting off the pad, but you're going to do a quick little roll program to get the um, get the ship in a way so the fins are perpendicular to the airstream, uh, just for better stability. Fins are locked right now. I have them locked so they're not kind of moving around and stuff. The thing can get really jolty if you like that, and it's more realistic to do it this way. Just doing a pretty standard gravity assist through uh, the first few seconds of our flight, then we're going to detach the Super Heavy and fly back to, uh, fly back to uh, the uh, KS. So that will happen in just a, a few seconds here as we burn the last few hundred meters a second of Super Heavy because we obviously need to save some fuel for landing. So there we go, cut off, stage, and there we go. We can get the booster in the top left corner as Starship fires up its four Terrier engines. And then the booster flips backwards to do its boost back burn to head back to the Kerbal Space Center runway using uh, the Kerbal Engineer little red target thingy as our landing thing. Now I have, I, just disclaimer here, I put stock in the title. Um, what I mean by stock is I mean the craft is fully stocked, so I guess I technically use Kerbal, I don't even think Kerbal Engineer really counts. It's, I mean, whatever, draw your own conclusions. Maybe this is like ultra clickbait, I don't know. Um, so we have deployed the air brakes. Now, one really, I really love the Super, I, I'm actually, I really like how this came out because when you have air brakes and those burner engines, you can really control uh, the direction of your booster is falling. So I, can, I, I was able to maneuver the booster basically directly over the VAB and we actually managed to get it right on top of the helipad. So that was pretty epic. I'm really happy with how this came out just because it's so small, the burner engines have a lot of control authority. Um, Starship, by the way, is uh, getting into orbit very, 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 very slowly. Those engines do not have a lot of TWR, but eh, who cares about that? We're really just watching the booster right now, I assume most people, as I kind of maneuver it over the Kerbal Space Center right about now. We're going to go full screen on the booster right about now. So here we are basically directly over the VAB, and now comes the throttle. Who doesn't need that? much throttle to land because it is very light right now coming in nice and slowly and a little less slowly now speed is starting to increase but right over the helipad and boom we made it not the most um epic beautiful of landings that was a little bit chonky but um it worked nonetheless uh, now we can just uh, go back to the Starship as it uh, does its final, actually that's quite a bit of burning still has left to do, this thing does not go very fast. Um, a few more disclaimers actually guys about the Super Heavy. Um, I got a, com a few comments on the last video that said, hey, it's, you know, Super Heavy doesn't use all its engines for landing. Um, the, the, I used all the engines, um, and I still do, just because it's, it's just way easier. Because if you don't, because then you have, you have to set up an action group to switch the engines and um, if you only do like, it's hard to get the exact number of engines right to do a perfectly efficient burn and stuff, and it's just easier. I don't know, sue me. And also, I believe uh, Super Heavy does land on the wings, but those wings are really, really explodey or folly offy. So uh, I just didn't. <laughs> Although actually, they're supposed to land on the wings, uh, but the wings kind of got smushed during the launch. So eh. hey, it's time for refueling, isn't it? <laughs> Getting too busy with my disclaimers. Um, so we have another starship that is um, going to meet us in orbit. I didn't really have a very good RCS system, so we just kind of have to launch, fire our engines towards the other thing. And we can have an advanced grabbing unit on this refueler, Tanker 1, and there it is, the two of them docked together. They're docked at, like, perpendicular angles, like 90 degree angles to fins. I think that actually looks pretty cool. That wasn't even intentional. I believe the real starships dock, like, fin to fin, so um, they're not really realistic. But, hey, um, now we're going to do our orbital refueling here in just one second, and then we'll just uh, we'll crossfade across from that because that is that would take too long. We don't want to see that. And we're the video already like almost nine minutes into the video, and this video is like a 20-minute video, so we need to get we need to get going, guys. We need to get this mission done nice and quick. Um, because I usually don't like my videos to be over 15 minutes, and this one's 20. So hey, hey, maybe it's just that epic quality of content. I don't know. Um So yeah, just going to be uh pointing to our maneuver node to head out to Aduna, the very epic place. Big about four minute burn, which is quite a while. Um, well, I guess not really nuclear. There's some ion engines you can, like, just, you're, you're burn for, burning for ages. Um, and you have to do multiple burns, but we do it all in one burn because we're Epic Gamer Bro person. Uh, if you want an Epic Gamer Discord, just get... I don't know, maybe if you want to join this. We're almost at 400 members. It's pretty epic. I don't know why, but whenever I stream, I got I get so many subscribers from streams and um, people joining the Discord. It's crazy. I don't know why. It's because a lot of the times when I stream, I do, like, Discord stuff on stream, like um, like the challenges from Discord. Like, I'm building the community space station right now that we did on Discord. And if you wanted to check out the streams, you can check him out. Um, I'll, I'll leave him posted. 
Uh, but now we're just uh, flying out to Duna uh, and get ready to do our uh, our atmospheric entry. Just setting up some uh, last second action groups before we can start our entry into Duna. There you go. Just going to be pointing radial out to get us slowed down as much as possible in the upper atmosphere because we want to do as little bit of our deceleration as possible with the engine. We want to do as much with uh, with well, we want to do as much deceleration aerodynamically as possible or drag it dynamically. That's a bad joke, but. Yeah, we actually managed to scrub off quite a bit of velocity through our um, through our uh, air brake. Um, that's what it's called, right? Air brake. Lost it for a second there. Um, and then uh, once we do that, uh, we're going to get uh, nice and low, and then eventually we'll have to enable those fins just for the last few uh, kilometers to the surface, and then we'll have to flip retrograde and fire uh, the three thud engines and i wasn't aware of this but uh, someone commented in one of my videos or my starship video and said the reason they use um the vector the sea level um raptors for uh for firing to landing at duna uh, or on mars she's <laughs> um uh, it's actually because uh so there go the fins getting activated cheeky little crosshair there because i did a quick save uh, because they could actually gimbal and the vacuum ones don't gimbal but uh, there we go firing up the engines Pointing a little bit more radial out than retrograde just because it's a really hilly spot if you just point in retrograde. So we're just trying to find a little flatter spot. This spot really isn't any flatter. Um, it's, I mean, it's slightly flatter, but this thing um, had major tippy problems on, on landing. There are quite a few outtakes. But here we are coming down to the surface of Duna. Landing legs are deployed, hovering just a few meters above the ground, wasting all the fuel just for no reason at all. And touchdown. And then it immediately tries to tip over so that we're going to use those we're going to fire those Werner engines to try and keep it upright come on stay up stay up <laughs> and in a second um I, you'll see i try and uh I actually do that a little bit later i try to lock the fins um in like the default position where they're all like extended and uh, that just causes it to tip even more so I, I get the bottom fins to lock but the top fins i don't get to lock but so um all we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, a quick little photo op here on duna and then and then we'll get right back to kerbin we didn't bring any kerbals so um let's get right back to kerbin so we are going to fire up the three sea level engines as we get going and then a few seconds later we're going to fire up our vacuum engines because duna has very little atmosphere so it's a much better idea to use the vacuum engines uh, just use those sea levels just for the first uh, about 100 meters a second. Now we're going to be pitching over for our ascent to Duna. Granted, Duna, has, Duna does have a very thin atmosphere. It does not have no atmosphere. Um, so I, um, I um, unfortunately, stupidity, stupidly, um, did my ascent a little bit too shallow. As you can see, I'm only pitching to about 10 degrees. I probably should have been pitching to about maybe 20 degrees here. Because I'm only about 14 kilometers up, and you have to, you know, drift all the way up to your apwaps, and you can you lose a lot of efficiency from uh, from aerodynamic losses. Uh, but hey, that's just how it goes. Stupid people. I'm, <laughs> I'm su I am very stupid people. Very, very stupid people. But here we are, through 20 kilometers now, and here I also accidentally do like a little flip that does not help, so I have to burn the engines a few extra times just to, uh, just to help us, um, get on up to our Apple app set and make sure it's outside of the atmosphere. So now we are basically on our home stretch once we get ourselves into orbit, because all we need to do is get ourselves back to, uh, back to the Duna, or back to the Kerbin, actually. Um, and once we get back to the Kerbin, then we can do the belly flop and the land. The belly flop is really cool. Um, I wonder if, you know, for the five people who are who actually watch the video all the way through, uh, you know, stay tuned for the belly flop. It's a pretty epic belly flop, if I do say so. I don't know if I do say so. I don't know. You'll see. Judge for yourself. This thing was actually, this thing is, um, this this starship is much easier to control than the, uh, the, the full-size starship. And the super heavy is also way easier. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe maybe I should just use the mini starship from now on. It is just way better, in my opinion. Or it's at least way easier to fly uh, than the real starship. The real starship is just uh, it's a it's a disaster. But hey, it works. On this one, it's just way more controllable on the descent. I don't know why. It just it it just feels like it. Um, maybe it's because the fairings aren't the whole way down the vehicle. Maybe that's what the problem probably is. Okay, so here we are. Welcome back to a curb. And um, one problem is uh, this thing does have quite bad re-entry problems. So what I have to do is I have to point retrograde and then like spin the thing. 
um, in order to stop it from exploding. Um, so obviously this is a very normal maneuver. The Kerbals would not at all black out, puke, and probably die from this maneuver. Um, but uh, yeah, perfect. It's Kerbal, there aren't any Kerbals. This is, I don't know why we'd even be doing this mission in, in, in like a, 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 like if we're doing like a role play type, but we're not. We're just having fun, right, Mike? Um, we're not gonna be able to do the whole thing in one pass. Um, the whole app waps a lowering, so we're going to do it in two passes. The first one is going to be like that normal, that retrograde pass, and then the final re-entry is going to be a slightly more normal pass. It's doing a quick save there. Slightly more normal pass uh, with, uh, with, uh, with you know, just doing the normal starship, you know, face first into the atmosphere type of a maneuver. Uh, so, yeah, now we're, we'll uh, engage the uh, time lapse, or go a little bit faster in the time lapse here in a few seconds as we, um, or maybe not, actually, I don't remember. Uh, my editing, what I did for the editing, but uh, either way, uh, we are now back for our second and final pass into the atmosphere, starting to get a little bit of atmospheric heating, uh, as uh, that's pretty expected, right? But I have to do kind of a little bit of spinny spinnies here because I'm trying not to blow up my that Werner engine, which uh, they didn't, they did end up exploding. So uh, I guess those, those like weird spinny spinny maneuvers were kind of useful. Yeah, there it goes. Um, so uh, if you can actually direct your attention to the uh, water that is very very quickly approaching. Uh, yeah, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get ourselves uh, slowed down so we don't end up landing in the water because that would be kind of bad. So, uh, yeah, it does end up working out. We do get ourselves slowed down and we can get our uh, fins turned on here in a second here. And then we can, there it goes, and then we can transition into the most fun epicness part of the Starship flight profile, which is the that belly flop and then that flip at the end and relating the engines to epic. Before we get too far into it, we're going to do a bit of a quick save right here uh, just for good measure. And then we can uh, do the belly flop. The uh, trickiest thing about the, for this starship at least, as controlling the horizontal speed. If you're not careful, the horizontal speed can very easily exceed 100 meters a second, and basically you're coming in like a plane at that point. Um, so we're just trying to do a little bit of like returny stuff and controlling the pitch um, just to make sure that our our speed, our horizontal speed does not get too excessive as we come down here below two kilometers. This thing comes in extremely slowly. There we go, below one kilometer. And then we can get ready to point retrograde. And there we go, relighting those engines. There are retrograde, doing the flip maneuver now. We are coming down very, very, very slowly here, just over 100 meters above the ground. So we can get ready to deploy our landing legs right here last few meters oh not the best landing <laughs> yeah and <laughs> landings haven't been very good this video but uh hey uh we have we have made it to kerbin welcome back everybody we did it we did it you know this video is only 17 about 18 minutes so not quite 20. um the reason i thought it was 20 beforehand um is because uh there's a piece of editing a piece of clip that i forgot to remove so I, that's a show how well my editing is. Um, so I did have to I had to split, split up the commentary. So I don't know. Let's see if you can figure out where the break is. So ho ho ho. Challenge time, guys. But okay. It uh, looks like we have made it. We're not in danger of tipping over anymore again. But uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. So like, thank you for watching. Until next time, please share your comments this video once again. Thank you for watching. Until next time. And bye.